This is everything about CS2 skins in 7 minutes. CS2 skins are virtual items that change the appearance of your guns, and no, they don't make you a better player. Skins are categorized into collections, and within collections, different rarities, consumer grade, industrial grade, mil spec, restricted, classified, covert, and gold. Skins from some collections can be opened from cases, these are the case skins, dropped as in-game drops, or awarded during operations, these are the map collection skins, and not all collections have all rarities. For example, the kilowatt case only ranges from the mil spec rarity to the gold rarity. Are you looking for cheap low float skins for trade ups? Check out today's sponsor, Skins Monkey. It's the most convenient trading bot site where you don't have to overpay for low floats. I found this 0 0.08 op elite build and this 0 0.09 M4 Tooth Fairy, and the tradable M4 was delivered to my inventory instantly. If you apply code Tech Savvy, you get a 5% deposit bonus, and you also get a $5 trading bonus when you start trading. Don't worry if you don't have any skins, just head over to Freebies and you'll find three giveaways all the way up to a gut knife gamma doppler so use my link in the description to start finding deals on low float skins today Opening a case costs $2.50, and you get one skin from the collection of skins contained in the case. Most of the time you get something worthless, but you have a 1 in 384 chance to get a gold that can be a knife or a pair of gloves. Skins from cases can come with a stat track counter that tracks the number of real players that you kill over all of the games that you play with that specific skin. Some map collection skins can have a souvenir version that can be opened from a souvenir package, and they come pre-applied with stickers from the major that the package came from. Some skins can be more worn than others. This is quantified by something called the float value, which is a number that ranges between 0 and 1. The higher the float value, the more worn the skin is. Some skins manifest this wear as scratches, others get darker, and although most look worse in higher wear, there are some that look amazing. Skins are categorized into five different conditions based on these float thresholds, and in some cases, the prices can be drastically different between different conditions. Some skins can have a float cap, meaning that they only exist in a certain range that's tighter than the usual 0 to 1, and this is what makes particular conditions on particular skins really expensive, such as the factory whiteouts. There are some skins that can look different from other instances of the same skin. These are called pattern skins, and they come in a thousand and one different patterns, identified by the pattern index. Essentially, the texture file is applied to them in a different position and orientation, and this spawned a variety of skins with special patterns. Some notable examples are this sussy looking 5.7 Kami, the P2000 hamster pattern, and of course the case hardened blue gems. The way these skins wear is also based on the pattern template, and this is what dictates how worn the corner is on a Karambit for example. CS2 skins are textured 3D models, and anyone familiar with Blender or other 3D software can create them. They are uploaded to the Steam Workshop, where they can be upvoted or downvoted by the community, and Valve chooses new community skins from here to add to the game. Artists with skins already in the game tend to make a lot of money, and therefore this scene is really competitive. Skins are worth real money, and yes, you can actually sell them for real cash in your bank account. You can also sell them on the Steam market, but the Steam listing price unfortunately is not a real dollar amount because you cannot withdraw Steam funds to your bank account. Buff.163.com is the biggest third-party marketplace with the most volume, and I'm not talking about Buff.market here that's a separate website, and generally your skins are considered to be worth as much as they sell for on buff.163. Some skins with low floats or special patterns are worth more, they're said to be worth overpay, but pricing these skins can be really difficult. To sell your skins, your best bet would be to use western third party marketplaces such as Skin Porter CS Float, Cash Traders like me, or instant sell sites like Skin Cashier. You can also trade your CS2 skins with other players or bot trading sites. Here your skins are safely swapped swapped by the Steam trading system, but when you trade your skins, your new skins will be untradeable for 8 days, so you can't trade them again for over a week. Your new skins will also be hidden from other players for 10 days as of the latest trading update. Stickers are pieces of artwork that you can apply to your skins. You can apply up to 5, you can place it anywhere, and you can rotate it any amount you wish. Stickers can be bought directly from Steam, opened from sticker capsules, or bought during operations. The sticker capsules that you 
open stickers from can be either bought from Steam, dropped as a level up reward when you play the game, or purchased during majors. When you apply a sticker, its value drops significantly, so if you apply a $5 sticker to a $5 gun, the new stickered gun won't be worth anywhere near $10, it's gonna be worth more like $6, but it's really, really hard to price stickered items. Some stickers are extremely expensive, especially the Katowice 2014 major stickers. The Titan Hollow and I Buy Power Hollow are the most expensive, with recent sales of $70,000. You can upgrade your skins with trade up contracts that require 10 of the same rarity skins to give you one skin, one rarity above. This is pretty much what my entire channel is built on, and it's the coolest feature in CS2, in my opinion. The outcomes are determined by the collections of skins that you use, and the odds can be calculated from this, but it is quite complicated, and I don't have time to go over this. Similarly, the float of the outcome is purely determined by the average float of the inputs and the float range of the outcomes. This is also very complicated and I also don't have time to go over this. Trade-ups can be made profitable if the probability weighted average price of the outcomes, also known as the expected return, exceeds the total cost of the inputs. If your expected return is over 100% of the cost of the inputs, then statistically if you spam this trade-up, you're gonna be making money. The value of CS2 skins historically tends to go up, so people often and hold them as investments. Some of the best performing investments so far have been cases, operation items such as skins from operation collections and operation stickers, and major stickers and major capsules. There's a lot of YouTubers with investment advice out there. Some are good, some are not so much, so be careful and don't listen to any single person. Make your own choices and consider CS2 investments a particularly risky section of your portfolio. Unfortunately, with skins being worth real money, there are a lot of skins scams out there, and the most notorious and most dangerous one of these is known as the API scam. In this scam, essentially the scanners gain partial access to your account, and when you attempt to send someone a trade offer, they're able to redirect it to their own account and steal your skins. If you want to avoid this scam, I have made a video about how to avoid it and how to never get scammed, and you can check it out here.